So, in this first video, I want to explain what lists are. And I want to put those in the context of setting, um, yeah, putting them into context on how you would design these things and how you would use them from uh, tools that I've been, been using for um, uh, making PHP, for example. Now, but first it's kind of important to realize what this thing that we actually are. We want to create data structures, but we don't want to have to re-implement a data structure every single time we want to store something different. So the things that we're talking about would be made for something generic, like an app, and these things are also called abstract data structures, because we want to have them handle all the content, but depending on the content or the type of data structure that we have, we also want to make sure that we define behaviors for what kind of operations we can do of these. And this is sort of an encapsulation of both data and behavior, which is something that object-oriented programming, of course, does very well. But as we're going to using C, and C is not an object-oriented language, I will sort of emulate these things um, and, and uh, take things from there. So let's start with a pretty simple data structure in C, um, which is a simple list. Now I've already prepared a little bit of a program here. It doesn't really do anything. It's just my main body here. But how would you define a list in C? Well, you set your data type, int for integer. Uh, you give it a name, uh, oh, numbers. Uh, you need to give it a size. So what is the size here? Well, let's say we make it four and then we can give it four numbers. So for example, 42, uh, 66, 99, and so on. So this is a simple list, right? It's a list of four integers, but this is not an abstract data, uh, abstract data structure. It is just a list with a specific type. Uh, doesn't have any particular operations defined on it and so on and so on. So although this is a list, it's not particularly very interesting. What is sort of more interesting is a built-in data type in C, which is the string. So we have a, strings are made out of characters. We give it a name. In this case, the name of our thing is name. And yeah, how do we do the length, right? I mean, if I want to store my name in this, then do I have to count the length here or not? Well, it turns out that you don't have to. So you can just leave it empty and the C compiler will automatically sort these things out for you. And now basically what this has done is this created a variable called name, which points to uh, well, an array or a list of characters. So looking at this in a simple way, if we would draw this out, it would look something like this. So we have name and the compiler will associate a, uh, well, an, a memory address at this, right? Say, say the memory address, which are often put in hexadecimal number is zero, zero, one, zero. I mean, I just come up with something. It's pretty much means the 16th character here. And this variable, this data structure in memory you'll get, then store the following things. So I'll remove the 0xx00, but you get 1, 1, 1, 2, and in memory you get then the D, the E, the R, the I, C, K, <laughs> it's hard to spell my name, and so on and so on. So you get an array pointing to by the symbol called name and simple in memory. This is already allocated inside your program itself. So it is part of the, we call that the data segment, sorry, the text segment where, um, yeah, this is the static data, which you can't actually remove. Or uh, in some cases you can't modify either. Now this name of course is a string. And what can we do with this string? Well, we can print it for example. So we can say printf name is, and then we do name as long as you don't make any typos. So oh, I forgot to add the double quotes, right? I mean, this is a simple enough thing. Now, when we compile this, uh, 
compile this with GCC, um, just giving the most basic kind of objects, which is just minus o test for the test binary and then the file name that we've just written to. So this is not particularly interesting, but... And then when we run our test program, it says name equals Derek buttons. That's simple enough. This is pretty much the simplest list that you can get away with. But the thing is here is that this is in your data segment. And if you would see that we would want to change the letter, like the fourth letter, these arrays are all zero base. If you set that to the letter X, for example, capital X. Now, when we compile this now and run this, that works. Uh, it's not guaranteed to work, but you can make this work. But what if I need to add something to the end of my list? What if I want to add something to Derek buttons? Um, and that's just really not possible to do, not in an easy way at least. Now, how we handle strings and variable length strings, we'll get back to at some point in a later episode. But what I wanted to point out here is that another way of doing this is instead of creating the static array here, what you do is you create a pointer. And then in order to store data in it, you do now need to allocate memory. So in C, we call a, a function called malloc for that. And you need to give that the length. Now, how do we know what the length of Derek Rattons is, right? I mean, it's a tricky thing. You have to count. So it is six letters of my first name, a space, seven letters of my surname, that makes it 14. So we do 14, oh, 14. But in C, it is important that strings also know the end of the string, and that is denoted by a null character. And that also needs to be stored. So we need to do 15, and then we can copy the data in it. So when we do mem copy to name, Derek Rathons, and then we can print it and it should work again. So let me compile this. Oh, Okay, now, handily, modern C compilers tell you that you messed up and also what you need to do to fix these things. So in this case, it says, um, first of all, I need to include stdlib so that we can do allocation of memory. So let's do that, stdlib, uh, and then run it again. And then it tells me one more issue. It says memcopy name Derek Rathons. And why is that? Because, well, memcopy, just copies memory around and you need to tell it how much data to copy. In this case, we want to copy 15 characters. So we copy, uh, run that. It gives me one more error saying that I also need string.h because that defines mem copy. Uh, the sdlib was for the malloc, but we need to string as well. And then when we run this, it says name equals Derek patterns, exactly what we expected. So this is a simple list that we have allocated itself, but it is important that if you run, if you allocate something, you also free it. And I use a tool for that called Velcrine. So uh, I just run that with tests. It takes some time and it will tell me here exactly that at the end, it says in use it exit 15 bytes in one block. Well, we know exactly what those 15 bytes are, of course because we allocated 15 bytes here. And if you, uh, um, if you tell Volgrind uh, that to show the still reachable uh, memory structures, it will actually then, or should show you. Why doesn't it tell me which one was? Oh yeah, sorry, never mind. I'm not seeing this right. It actually tells you exactly 15 bytes in one block are definitely lost in this location. And it tells you exactly in which function this was called. That is not really useful. We want to know the exact line numbers. And for that, you give GCC another uh, flag to create debugging information. And if you now run it, it will tell you exactly that 15 bytes in one block are definitely lost. And it says it's in main at array.c line nine. And if you turn on the numbers, you see exactly that this is line nine, right? So another way to free that is to just free the thing that we've allocated. So let's free this here uh, and then run this, uh, compile this again and run this. And now, oh, actually there is another bit of output here that Velgrind now gives. 
So what does it say here? It says invalid rate of size one and strln. Well, we don't have any strln, but that is used in printf internally. And it tells us something that we're trying to read zero bytes in a block of size 15 freight. Okay, that makes a perfect sense, right? Because in this line, we're using the name which we already have freed here. So you need to be careful that you only free your data after you have used it. Because otherwise you get a use after free and that can cause issues. Now, when I do the free write, everything is correct. So this is our basic simple string array thing, right? So we have looked at doing a static array where we just do this directly. Um, and well, we allocated it now with memory. So there's a few issues with these things is that it doesn't, the strings don't really grow. You have to do some complicated magic to do that. And they also don't shrink, but we'll get back to that in a future episode. Now, now let's focus on which other sort of um, uh, data structure that we can store. And instead of doing a simple scalar value, such as a character or a integer number, let's define a structure here. So we do structs. And what we want to store is we want to store a name and a color. And we're going to store elephant names, of course. Now, this structure consists out of two elements. And if we define this in the first simple way, we would do this uh, something like this. I mean, in a static way. So you can destruct uh, elephant. That's the data type. And we say um, bluey. And then we can define these things by setting the name bluey and the color. You can guess what it is, blue, of course. And that then defines a structure. We can compile that. It's not an array anymore, but let's doesn't particularly matter. Now we get some warnings. Uh, what did I do wrong? I did this the wrong way around. My apologies. Uh, even although I write C code for a long time, I still mess up. Uh, sometimes, <laughs> but that's why we have a friendly compiler. Now, of course, when we run this, nothing happens, right? Because why, why does nothing happen? Well, <laughs> the program doesn't do anything, but we also don't allocate any memory because if we run Valgrind with this, then it shows us nothing is wrong, which is exactly what we, of course, want. Now, in order, this is, of course, not dynamic and we need to do something to, to allocate a structure. Now, what you can do is, of course, write an allocator for every single time. But what I like to do is I actually like to create um, like uh, l sort of like methods around these things. It's quite a OE way of approaching it and also quite a well a standard way of doing is, is well, you create a constructor. So what does this return? It returns a struct elephant pointer and it says uh, elephant. Citra. Now, this has two required arguments. Uh, now you can choose whether you put them in the constructor or not. So I like to do that. Um, in this case, we have the name and the color. And well, what does this function need to do? Well, it needs to create this new structure, the struct elephant, which is uh, typical to do something like this. Um, uh, by calling temp, at least that is what I do. Uh, sorry, struct elephant temp. Uh, we need to allocate that. We need to allocate that. And what size do we need to make it? Uh, well, luckily C has a built-in function. It's called size of, which is not a function. It is a keyword that is the right size for us. And then we have done that. Well, we can do uh, the allocation of name and then temp. And when we're done, we can then return the structure. This is handy, but there is, oh, and then let's uh, create one. So we create elephant bluey. And we say bluey equals uh, elephant citor. And we say bluey and blue. Now, there is one issue here is that 
in C when you assign values like we do here in line 15 and 16, it doesn't actually copy the data. So that means that if you would free bluey or blue from another context, it would then be broken data. So in most cases, you need to duplicate this data. Especially because for every time you create something, you also should free something. And it'd be nice if we wouldn't have to care about whether the data that has been put into the structure, whether we can free this or not. So it is a common thing that if you create a structure like this, that you also take care of the memory itself, uh, which what we doing here is we making sure that this object, this elephant structure, knows everything and owns the memory that it uses. Now, when we compile the script, you can, sorry, not script, compile this thing, uh, we get an error. So it says expected expression before struct. So now, interestingly, although size of is a keyword, if it's more complicated, it still wants to have these parentheses around it. Now, when we run this, with Valgrind, you will understand that, well, we're getting some memory issues again, right? Because we have created memory, we have allocated the elephant structure, and we have also allocated or duplicated the name and the color. So we do need to free that. And to free that, we need to create another method. So in this case, we say uh, struct void, it's not going to return elephant uh, anything, detour, <laughs> uh, and then you pass in the struct elephant pointer. And I just call it E because it's shorter to type. Now, what do we need to free here? Well, we need to free the name, we need to free the color, and we need to free the structure itself. And by doing this, we have now implemented the freeing here. So we also need to call it, of course, elephant detour. Uh, which we then call Bluey. Blue, I should have <laughs> picked a name as easier to pronounce <laughs> or type. Now, when we then run this, compile this, uh, I've done something wrong. Not if I mistype. Okay, struct void. No, that is nonsense. Just void. Compile this, and now when we run this, we get. It says exactly what happened. It says there were three allocs, there were three frees, and there are 27 bytes allocated, and nothing is left over. That's exactly what we need here. But this, of course, this is not a list. This is a single element. Uh, and we don't even know what to do with this. So maybe, just maybe, we should also um, just create a method that uh, just dumps the structure, just to have something to uh, show for, right? E, uh, and this just does just a printf that says elephant name is color name. I know it's not the most interesting thing, but E, color. Uh, there we go, and then when we call that elephant dump, uh, we call bluey, no, with a lowercase b, oop, let's lowercase b and add it. So when we now run this little uh, example, oop, we run this, and then when we run it, it uh, says bluey is blue. We don't need to use Valgrind anymore. We'll get back to using it, because I think for this kind of stuff, it's kind of handy to see, for example. So yeah, memory allocation is a bit of a pain, but it is important. Um, and it is important, especially in this first episode, that because we're going to have to use this and Valgrind for debugging significantly, uh, quite a lot. All right. Now um, let's look at something more interesting. Now we have this data structure. We have the elephant now. And how does this look like in memory? Well, let me go and draw that again, because I like using pen and paper. So what we have here, we don't have the string anymore. Instead, what we have now is, well, we have created a structure, which is the elephant structure. And the elephant structure, if we look at it, 
let's have a look at it. What does it contain? Well, it contains two character pointers. And we, they're called name and color. And character pointers, pointers in this case are eight bytes because I'm using a 64-bit machine. So we have name and color. So name takes up eight bytes and uh, color takes up eight bytes. And my drawing is pretty horrible, but there we go. So this field is name. So this is byte zero, this is byte seven, and then eight and 15. Uh, this is pointed to by name. And this is the color. And because this is something that is allocated no longer on the stack, we don't necessarily know what the address is of the first bit, but we do know that once we have allocated it, we have a symbol that is created. Uh, let me scroll down a little bit. Uh, for example, Bluey. The moment we do the allocation, we get uh, a new address. And let's say that the address here is 0x308. Uh, I need to come up with something, but there we go. But the names themselves are not stored as part of the structure. They are stored uh, as another pointer. So although Bluey, the value of Bluey pointer is 3 or OX308, what name and color actually contain in 8 bytes is another address. So for example, the name here could be 0x, um, say, 800. And then the color could be another one. For example, 0x, x0 to 0. And that means that the memory that follows, that actually has the name in it. So we have this array here, which I will not draw fully, uh, but say that the address of the first one here is then not just 0, but uh, this is the 0 that is 308, and this is, of course, 308, and 8 later is in, in hexadecimal is 310, and then the last one would be 7 higher, 317. Hexadecimal is kind of handy because it does things in, in 16s, right? Um, and of course, I should have drawn the one before here as well, 30F. And now this is so small that you can't read this anymore. But in any case, what the other addresses point to, so this is 0x88 to start with, and that's where we get that name in it. So we get the B, the L, the U, the E, and the Y. And, well, that only takes up four bytes, right? So five bytes. So this is 0x, zero, 0, 04. Uh, I missed the axiom. But then color is only a little bit further along because that starts here at um, x20. Sorry, 0x820 to start with. And that's all we'll have to start a color blue. Oh, sorry, that was a lowercase. And then that address is 0x23. Now, this is what has been allocated in memory. And these things uh, will stay there until you free them. So the interesting thing is, of course, that this is only one structure. And what we want to store is, um, of course, multiple elephants. Now. We want to store this in a structure called a list, and these are often called linked lists as well. And the idea behind this is, is that you have a structure that then knows how to point to a future elephant. So all the things that I've just drawn here, I'm going to condense and not expand on anymore, but instead just call this the bluey elephant that has some data associated with it, and we won't immediately bother with all the increase intricacies of also having the bluey and blue parts of this um, for future reference. Okay, so let's uh, not dump anything anymore. And uh, let's create another elephant here, which we shall call, or shall we call the other, other elephant, bluey, what else? I have sunny. I'm just randomly looking in my uh, office to see what the colors are. So we have sunny, 
which is yellow. Of course, we need to forget, not forget also to free this information. But how do we store these two elephants in a list? Now, the data structure that I'm explaining here first, and there are other variants of lists, is uh, a linked list. And again, this is much e easier if I draw this on a bit of paper. So let me just do that. So I've made a clean uh, slate here, and let's draw how these things look like. Now, the first thing is we need to have a name for our list, right? Uh, for now, just call it list. And this is going to be a pointer to a structure. Uh, what address do we use for this? From now on, we'll remove the zero X in front because I can't be bothered to write it out all the time. So let's say it starts with 150, and that is hexadecimal. Now, what does this list contain? Well, what does it need to know? It needs to know what the first element is, and maybe further elements, right? It needs to know, well, it needs to know a little bit of information. So let's draw this list structure, and we might add more elements to this later. So what it first needs to know is, in the first bit, a pointer to potentially a, uh, a first elephant. So this is called the hat. Let me put this so that it actually fits on the screen. I should have drawn a little bit to the right here. So we have the hat. Now, when we start this hat, the value of this, we should initialize that to something, nothing, because we don't have any, um, any elephant stored. And to define nothing, it is very common to use a null pointer. And this null pointer is often, but not always, defined just as 0, x, 0. So hexadecimal or just 0, basically. So that's how we start out. Now, what do we need to do if we add an elephant to this list? Well, we need to create an elephant structure, which I shall use blue for the data structures that we are storing, which is bluey. And of course, it has these two pointers in here, that is the name and the color, but we're glossing over that now. But we have this elephant bluey. Now, how do we store that in the list? Well, what we can do, of course, is, well, we can set the pointer here immediately to what bluey is. And uh, I will use different numbers here. So bluey is 300 or x300. And I will also draw Sony here as well. which uh, we call address uh, 310. Whether these numbers make sense, uh, I don't know, but uh, we take them as an example here. So here we have them here. Now, if we would immediately set the head pointer to blue, then how do we know what is going to be next? You don't really know, right? Because, well, it only has the head. So where do we store this? Well, there's different ways of doing this. But in the linked list, it's a common thing to create a list element structure, uh, which I shall draw here. This list element um, contains two things. It contains a pointer to the data. In this case, of course, that is 300. And then, and that is called the pointer. Uh, sorry, yeah, a pointer or something like that. It can also called, be called data. In this case, we call it pointer. And then the other element points to a ne next list element. So for example, that could be, you know, in this case, if we haven't altered Sony yet, it will be null, right? So yeah, I'll just leave it empty for now. And that element is often called next. And then when we on, uh, and then of course, what we can do is we can set the hat. We can set that value instead of null. We now say it is 300, or we basically make this pointer. We set this correct. And we're leaving everything that is no leave empty from now on. So this is handy. We can now create this list. And when we add an elephant, uh, elephant I mean element, <laughs> um, and then we can do that. So let's have a look at how we would implement this specific bit before we continue with further things. 
So let me switch back to the code. So we still have our elephant and our dump function, but uh, yeah, we will ignore that for now. But what we do create is we have to create a list structure. So this is a struct we call lList for linked lists, which, well, as you can see in our uh, in in our drawing, is only has one element. It's called hat. So let's call it hat. And what is this appointed to? Well, it's appointed to a list element. So struct elem uh, short and an element and um, uh, well we, we don't know the value uh, of this yet but this is our hat and at the moment that's everything that we have here we don't have anything else in uh, in our data yet we only have the hat but we of course do need to store the list element as well so we store this information and what do we have in here well we have a um, a data pointer, uh, but we don't know because we want to make it generic. We don't actually give it a type here because if we call this immediately elephant pointer, then we can only store elephants. And for that, it's custom to use a void pointer. A void pointer is basically a pointer to some memory, but no meaning is given on this block of data. And so uh, in this case, we call this pointer. And then the next element, uh, and where next would point to, is uh, a struct l list element. Um, so this is our structure. Now you'll find out that if we compile this, or attempt to compile this, I should say, that we get an error. Uh, where do we get an error, the first error? Oh, first error is because I forgot my semicolons. So let's do that first before we get a, a reasonable error message. Um, it then warns about Sunny, uh, because I call it Sunny. Sunny and Sunny. And there we have it. We have this now compiled. So that is handy. To be fair, I actually expected this to work because I had expected it to whine that when we are doing this here, that it hadn't known about list element yet. So we might get a, um, well, a warning there. Now, what do we need to do to create a list? Well, we need to create a, uh, a creator. We call it list element ctor, and it has no arguments because we don't need to give it anything. And basically the only thing that we need to do here is to allocate it and return it. Temp uh, is malloc size of <coughs> a struct a a lists and then return this. But what one with one caveat is that um, malloc allocates memory, but it doesn't free the memory. So at this state, we don't actually know what is going to be in hat. So always, always initialize your data members because otherwise you will run out in, you will run into trouble. Now you can either do that by setting each member to null or what you can also do is you can use calloc which will set all the data members to zero. I am not a fan of that in this case. So let's just do this. And of course, uh, we need to set our list here equals, or maybe I should call this uh, to be funnier. So let's create such a structure. Elephants is elephant. Sorry, is list citor. And we don't have to give it anything, uh, but we still have to call it. So there we go. Of course, when you've allocate things you also need to free it so we call this detour elephants as well and of course we need to implement that uh, so this is void uh, it doesn't need to have any arguments so the only thing that we need to do here is well we need to um, uh, well what do we need to do here it's actually interesting right we need to make sure that we clean up all the data elements as well as the structure itself. 
sorry, I'm doing this wrong, of course. You do need to pass in the list. Um, so let's focus on that first. So when we just create a list, the only thing that we need to free is the list itself. So that's what we have done here. Uh, let's assume hat knows nothing. Now, when we compile this, you should see that uh, we made a typo again, or rather I made a typo. This pointer, oh, eh, sorry, new keyboard. This pointer needs to be here. And there we go. So it compiles fine. When we run this, uh, we get no warnings, no errors. You only see uh, seven alloc, seven frees, and 64 bits allocated. Why this is 64? Can't really complain about too much yet. But still, we haven't done anything yet. We haven't added the elephants to our list. So when we add our first element, we need to we'll have to implement that, which is list add, just keep it simple. We add it to the elephants and we want to add Bluey to it. Now, uh, how do we do that? Well, like this, for example. Yeah, let's implement that. It doesn't return anything, so this art, we are struct, uh, list. Yeah, this is our elephants list, and then because it's going to be generic, it needs to accept a void pointer, uh, which we call data. And well, we already have this data structure, so the only thing we really need to do is, well, we need to create our list element structure. Uh, so let's do that first, this LM, because as you remember, that is this interim structure that contains uh, the pointers as well as the next element, right? That we will do in our next example. And so we create that, I call them E in this case, we do E equals, um, well, what we can do is, of course, write a constructor for this. So we'll do that in a moment. Um, and then what we need to do, if the head is empty, we need to assign it to the head. So we do if L hat is this null, then we can do L hat equals the new data structure that we've just done. And of course, once we have created this, we need to say next null. Uh, actually, I'm not going to do that in here. I'm actually going to do that uh, in the construct itself. So we just pass in the data here. So it will set all of these elements for us. Um, an alternative might be that you can also do this uh, separately but I'm not so much a fan of that. I just put it through. Let's not delete too much data. Uh, just do it in this case, because this is more of a constructory approach. I mean, it's just preference. Now, of course, if we have this already, then yeah, we're going to explode here, right? We don't know what to do with this just yet, but that's fine for now. We just leave this here. Uh, so yeah, let's implement the LMC tour and the LMD tours which aren't that interesting. So the C tour will, of course, will return an LL, LL, LL list element pointer, uh, LL list element C tour. And what we pass in was our data pointer, right? So we do structs LL list element, no, pointer temp. We do temp equals malloc, size of struct. I mean, this is all a bit boilerplate. That's how it goes. We set next to null because we don't know what's going to follow it. And then the data is data. And then we return this. So this is our list element C term. We'll get back on the destructors a little bit later uh, because this is going to get a bit more complicated. Okay, so that is basically what we have now implemented for adding uh, the first element to the list, right? Um, but what do we need to do is, um, well, what do we need to do if the head has already something in here? Well, let me show you that by drawing this again. 
So let's go back to the drawing that we have. So we already implemented the LL list add to add Bluey to uh, our list, but now we want to add Sony too. Now, in order to add Sony to our list, what we need to do is we create this list element structure again, which are two elements in here, which has the pointer in it, and then the next. And the next we set to null. And of course, the pointer points to Sony by doing setting the address in here, and that then ends up pointing here. But how do we add this list element to uh, our list? Well, how do we do this, right? I mean, what we need to do is we need to set next of the first element to this newly allocated structure that we have made here. Um, so yeah, uh, I've not really mentioned the addresses of these things here or rather I have, but I made a duplication and you can't really have duplications in here. So what it says, 1300 here, let's make that 380. And 380 is the address of this structure and 300 of this one and 310 of this one. And then this one, well, well let's say it is going to be 480. So what we need to do is we need to loop through all the elements in the list until we find the one where next is nil. And then with that element, we can send next to the new address that we have just created. So, so what you need to do is find the head pointer, loop over all the elements until the first one of next is empty and then set next to 418. And when we have done that, then we can add this. But what happens now if we'd have, say, another elephant here? Uh, Let's say we have our lovely mammoth in here, Wooly. Now, in order to add this element to the list now, uh, well, we need to start at the head, find the first element with uh, where next is not, not in here, right? So next is not null here. So we go to the next one um, to find the next element where the pointer is null. And when we find that, well, we can create this list element structure again. Uh, let's make this 580. Uh, make this list here, set a pointer there. The pointer is, is Wooly, which is then 320. And we can fill this one in 580. And then this one is done. Now, if we want to create another one, what you end up doing is we start at the head, loop to the first one, loop to the second one, loop to the third one. And you can sort of see that um, the more you do this, every time you add an element, you need to loop through one more element before. And of course, that isn't very uh, efficient to do. So how do you get around this? Well, you get around this by uh, adding another element to the list, which we call the tail. And the tail pretty much always points to the last element in our list. So in this case, after we've added Wooly, it would already point here. And that is of course 518. Which means that in order to add one more element, we only have to go to the tail and immediately add it. And of course then update the tail, which is of course a lot more efficient to do. So let's implement that instead. Okay, first of all, what we need to do is we need to change our list to have one more element, right? So where's our list? It says list lm hat, and we add one more. Tail, we need to make sure that in our ctor, we set these things to null correctly. And there is that. Uh, the list detour, still let's, let's close over that for now. Uh, I don't think we're going to go to that in this first video, but that will be the next one. <coughs> Still, if the head is null, that also is going to mean that the tail is null. We can add our list element, but what we also now need to set is our tail to E as well. That is simple enough. So if the head isn't null, then 
If you need to find the tail, add our new element to the next of the tail. And then we can set the tail to E. Now it is important that you do this in this order because if you do that in the other order, so what we first do, we set the tail next to the new element and then we update the tail. So to show you that, it's like tail, if we, uh, if we have it, what we do is we say the next element, we po point to the next uh, structure that we created. So we first update this link here to point to our new structure. Uh, let's call this 680. So we set that. And then we update the tail to point to the next one. We can't do that the other way around because if you do this the other way around, then if you update the tail first to point to the next structure, you lose the link to the one that you have to update. And that is not great, of course. So that's why this order matters. And there we go. Now we have our list constructed. And every time we call add, we add one more element to the list. And so on and so on. Okay, so, so far what we have managed to do is we have created our list and added elements to it. Shall we have a look what actually happens if we debug this and see what happens every time we call um, LL list add? And uh, first, let me see whether this compiles in case I made any typos. Yep, I did make some typos. Um, I had not done list element correctly. Oh, I called it pointy here. Produce data everywhere else. What else do we have? Implicit declaration of function L list elem citor, because I call it list elements. Uh, which line was that? It's 55. Hey, this is why we have a compiler. Struct list alum doesn't understand what that is either. Is that not correct? This element Citor. No, it's called also level list alum. See, the, the problem is that in my day to day code, um, I use alum. Uh, and now it warns that uh, I have used little this alum in a few more places. How annoying. Uh, should be it. There we go. So now we have compiled this and when we run this, um, hmm. Well, it shows that some data is being lost. What is this data that is being lost? It says, well, the list elements, list elements structure that we created is lost, uh, which makes sense, right? Because we have, um, although we created this element here, we didn't actually end up freeing it. But again, that oh, sorry, I should switch my screens. Thanks. Uh, yeah, so if we have, um, uh, let's, let me switch here then. So if we want to run this, we can see here that, well, the element, uh, it will warn us that we have 16 bytes in one block are definitely lost because that is the element constructor thing that we have created. If we alter our other elephants that I will be adding now, so we'll let us say we have woolly. That's not how you spell that, but that's fine. It's brown. And let's add those two elements as well. Yes, Sony and Bully. Now, of course, if we run this, uh, I should free Bully too. Free Bully, compile, comp compile. I hadn't defined this variable structure for it. Ruling. Now when we run this, we will should see that we lose even more data, right? That makes sense. Um, 
But the, the output is a little bit different here. So it first says that one 16 bytes in one block indirectly lost in record one of three, which is our uh, list element structure. And it does this twice. But then the other one is a little bit different. It says there's 16 bytes directly lost, but 32 bytes indirect. Because there's still some things that point to it, right? Because we have these pointers following up on each other. In any case, now let's run our debugger and see what data structures are actually uh, uh, created. So let's start GDB, which is uh, well, my little, uh, well, not little, it's my debugging tool uh, as choice, uh, and set a breakpoint on line 102. I know xdebug makes it a lot easier, right? But this, this trick works. And it will tell you, well, the breakpoint is set on this, this line number. I mean, blue is a little bit hard to see, but there we go. And now when we run our program, uh, it stops at that line. And now let's inspect what is in elephants. Well, it says it's a structure a la list. And then it has lots of fives in the address. I don't know how to make this a different color. But let's inspect what this actually says in here. As well, it says there's a hat and there's a tail. Uh, now let's see what is in the tail. That's what we expect, right? There's a data pointer as well as next that point to zero. And when we look at hat, uh, let me put this to the top of the screen. When we do the hat, we have a data element and a next element. And then when we look at next element, we get the next data element. Um, and then we can do this once more. And then it points to the third element, which of course we know is null because we have added only three elements. So this is all looks all fine. And now we want to sort of look what is in the second element. So let's print the data part of this. And now we get a warning from GDB saying that attempt to deference a generic po pointer. Because we want to store arbitrary data, we had to make this a void pointer, right? I mean, uh, the, the element structure stores the void pointer data on this line and then point it to the next element. And because we want to store arbitrary data, this has to be void. But we still want to be able in GDB to find out what is in here. And luckily, what you can do is you cast this data. So you can cast this as a elephant pointer. Did I misspell elephant? <laughs> what did I do here? Aha. Of course, it is a struct elephant. And then you get your output, as you'd expect. You get sunny color. So that is the second uh, elephant that we added if you do the first one. Thanks, uh, Phyllis. Hmm. That didn't do the job. We'll, we'll try that out for the next one. Thanks for the hint. I'll go dive into that. Uh, so yeah, the first one. Oh. Not sure it says deleted breakpoint there suddenly. It's fine, doesn't matter. So yeah, the first one is bluey. Uh, the next one is sunny and then the last one is woolly and then if we do the next ones more you'll get an error because there's nothing here so now it says uh, address is zero apparently it might be quoted no still doesn't do the job well i'll go find it out for the next video because the addresses although they're not particularly important but it is sometimes useful to see what goes on here. So at the moment we have created our data structure, but what we haven't done yet is of course, is deleting the structure. Uh, so the list detour at the moment only frees the list itself, but it needs to free up all the other elements too. So now how would you do that? Well, we need to free the list elements themselves. The list elements themselves we can of course free uh, by looping over all of these elements right so we can for example um, we have the list element is uh, 
uh, we sold out the pointer. And what we do is we start the pointer at the, at the head. And while uh, as long as there is a next one, mm, how do we do that? Free. And this gets a bit tricky, right? So how do we free the next element? What we need to do is we need to figure out how to free that element without and still have a link to the next one. So perhaps it's better to do um, element uh, to free. Um, and we set that to our current pointer. Then uh, actually we set to the next one. Next one is pointer next. Because now we can free our list element just fine. Uh, and what we can then do um, Actually, let's do it this way. Well, pointer, and then we can do this, and then pointer equals uh, next. So what this will do is that we start at the head, and if the head exists, then we set the next pointer, uh, just to remember what it is, to the next element in our list, and then free that list element and then we can set our pointer to the one that we've just remembered. So pretty much what this does is, it does the following, right? First, what we do is we start uh, with a pointer, we point to the head, and that is pretty much this element here. What we then store is we say next equals this address here. And then, because we have now remembered this, we can free this element. Um, in the next iteration of our while loop, uh, we set the pointer, sorry, in line 77, where, where my cursor just is, we set the pointer then to the next element as well. So now it points to, not this element anymore, but it points to the next one, which is, of course, this element. Now, the first thing that we do is we set this next now to this next element, which is this one. Free this element with our free. Uh, and then set the pointer now to this element next. And then so on and so on. Until next is empty and when it is empty, then we are done with our list. So, uh, let's now run this code again, or compile it and see whether it works. Call GCC, no errors, run file grind, we get no errors, which is exactly what we expected to do. But there's one issue still is that in this simple example, we create all our data structures, we add them to the list and we detour the list and then we delete our data elements. In many cases, of course, it is impossible to immediately know when our data elements should be destroyed or removed from memory. And in order to that, there is a different trick for that. But that is going to have to wait for the next uh, video in this series.